So here we're on the play against an unknown opponent. And I think this is a pretty clear keep. We have both our colors. We have turn two Heart of Kirin. We have turn three Pia, and we, which allows us to crew the heart. And if we're playing against an aggressive deck, we also have the Abrade. And Abrade's good in, I'd say, most matchups, because there's something useful to kill in a lot of the matchups. So pretty clear keep. Against looks like either Mardu Vehicles or Ramen Up Red, most likely Ramen Up Red. Still going to lead with a Heart of Kirin. Yep, take some damage. Now here, we're going to play Pia for sure. And the question is, do we crew and attack or do we just play defense and pass? I chose play defense and pass. Um, because we don't really want to get into a race situation against a deck with a bunch of burn spells. Now here, in response to the, the Harsh Mentor, we crew. Because at this point, um, if they have a Harsh Mentor, we, we don't want to be crewing the heart very often. So the only downside there is they attack with their Kenra and we block with the heart and they shock our heart, which is a great trade for us. That's a much better trade than losing our Pia or our Thopter. So that's why we crewed in response there. Now we play Inventor's Goggles, which is not great against Mentor unless we can draw another Artificer to put it on. Uh, at this point, we're kind of a little bit handcuffed uh, unless we deal with this Harsh Mentor. Which we do have the Abrade, but they they have other cards that are problematic as well. Well, a second Harsh Mentor, well, start chipping away. Let's get one off the board. You have to take a damage to do so off the Ruins. Well, there's a Ballista. All right, now I have a decision. They uh, We Ballista for two, and they Lightning Strike our Ballista. So if they just Lightning Strike targeting our face, we take three. If they target the Ballista and remove the two counters to kill their Mentor, we take four. So um, at this point, it's kind of like, well, we could just let the Ballista die, and we take no damage. Or we can remove one counter to kill one of their creatures, in this spot, likely the, the Bomat Courier. Or we can remove both counters and take four damage and kill the Mentor or both their other creatures. Uh, given that we have a Heart of Kirin and a Goggles out, None of their other creatures are really threatening the way the Mentor is. So at this point, we just kind of bite the bullet and we take four damage to kill the Mentor. Not ideal. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, we killed the other two creatures. What was my reasoning for that? So I think my reasoning for that was uh, we're just going to basically not do things that the mentor hurts us for, so we're just not going to activate anything. Um, and based on the way the board is right now, there's really nothing we need to activate. So the mentor is not hitting us because we have P at a block. And if they play any other creature, um, kind of the worst case scenario, we take two damage to crew the heart. So in this scenario, I think that's about what's happening. Okay, so they kill our Pia. They play a Crasher and they crash. So that was pretty awkward for us. And then we just draw Goggles, which does not help us at all. And we're just basically stone dead. Can't even equip the Goggles because of the Mentor. So even if we killed the Mentor instead of the other two creatures, I don't think that there's really a chance we're winning this game. Because they do the same thing and they just have two other creatures instead of the Mentor. And like we could crew the heart one turn, I guess, in response to killing our Pia. Um, so that'll like buy us a turn. Then I guess we could goggles up the Thopter. Like we're we're still in really bad shape. I mean, I guess I would have improved our chances. I think we should have killed the the mentor instead. Um, but then basically every draw stuff in their deck is good because if they draw land, they get the Kenra back. Um, and that'll basically kill us. Yeah, I don't know. I, th I think that was a mistake, but that was a tough game anyway. It's game two. We're on the play. Oh, yeah. How did we sideboard? Let me show you how we sideboarded. 
So this is version two of the deck. This is the one that went 4-1 instead of 5-0. The other one we just played against three Mardu vehicle decks in rounds uh, three, four, and five. And we're gonna play against the Mardu vehicles uh, deck again next round as well. So I figured I'll just uh, start with the second version. So the main change is we added a couple ether hubs over some of the other lands, uh, just to improve our mana base a little bit and to make some of our to our uh, energy cards slightly better. And we're trying out Merchant's Dockhand over Bomat Courier. So it's not as aggressive, but it's better in the, the late game, being able to activate it. Um, let's see, we also added a second Pia. And that's about it for the main deck. For the sideboard, we replaced Crook of Condemnation with Sentinel Totem. And we added a Sahili Rai Rai over the fourth negate. I believe that is all the changes that we made. So in this matchup against Mono Red, uh, similar to all the other aggressive uh, matchups like against Mardu Vehicles, Black Red Aggro, we just want to jam all these removal spells. So we just bring in six removal spells and the cards that we take out, we want to take out Heart of Kirin. Those are pretty bad against the aggro decks. And then I took out like one Merchant Stock Hand and uh, some dragons. Like I, I think I took out the, the Free Gem Regents and the Glory Bringers. Uh, in general, that's I think what you want to do against the aggro decks. You don't have time for a lot of dragons. You want to lower your curve and you want to bring in a bunch of removal spells. So if you bring in the, the cheap removal spells, we have four braid, four spray, um, then really the only way we're going to lose is to Hazrat. And as long as we can um, mount an attack in the air, so if we have like a goggles, our creatures match up real well. Uh, if we make some thopters, we can start chipping in for damage. Ballista can get big. Um, we can start activating the dock hand to find us more removal spells and more chump lockers and things. So as the game progresses, Hazret is really the only card that can give us a problem um, post board. And uh, yeah, basically the, the the spray, the primary target is Harsh Mentor, and a braid, the primary target is the dinosaur. There's a rampaging Ferocidon. But any of the removal spells are flexible and can basically kill any other creature in their deck other than Hazaret as well. So we basically want to set up a, a semi-race situation with our creatures while killing their important creatures. But we, we want to leave in some number of dragons because otherwise we just really have no way to kill our opponent. But they're also likely bringing in uh, Chandra's Defeat. So um, it's just sometimes the dragon just, you pay five mana or whatever and it just dies to their one mana spell. So really Goggles is the key card. Goggles is the way for all our creatures to match up really well against theirs. So let's see how this works out. So we have uh, this deck I'm looking at. All right, so what do you like to play first? Uh, yes. Now this hand looks good. Um, it has some action. It has a turn two play, it has a turn three play. And then if our Ballista and our Thopter are alive, we have a Thopterist on turn four, or if we draw a land with Thopterist on turn four, we might even have a Free Gem region uh, early this game. So we have the tools. We don't have removal spells, but we have good blocks. Alright, Bowmat takes some damage. Yeah, there's a removal spell. We're just going to play out the Ballista instead, because we really want to have a Thopterist in two turns, and we don't have that fourth land yet. Just take this. Now they have the Harsh Mentor. So we're going to play the Pia so we don't take the damage to make the Thopter off the Virtuoso. Wow, a second Mentor. It's looking a little rough. Still didn't draw that fourth land, but fortunately our artifact survived. So we still get the Thopterist down. Now we're kind of in the game plan of just improvising a dragon into play. And our board is matched up pretty well against theirs. It's just a bunch of 1-1s and 2-2s. Now we have something a little better than the 1-1s and 2-2s. And... Since we have so many Thopters, we're able to keep up a Braid mana as well. So now we are the ones with the threat 
on the board that's threatening to to get damage. Now the opponent wants to get us while we're while our thopters are tapped. So the subraid is going to come to in in handy here. So they get cards on their Bomac couriers, no problem. They have two cards in hand. So if they want to sack a courier, um, they can basically just upgrade whatever. Um, we assume that they have, say, a shock. So if we block with our dragon on one of the two power creatures, then it can get shocked and become a 2-2. And it'll permanently be a 2-2 because of the soul scar mages. Um, but basically, the opponent likely has something to do here, likely the shock. Uh, but we kind of have to get some of these creatures off the board. So let's see how we block here. So the, the Thopterist can't block because of the Earthshaker Kenra. So we only have two creatures that can block. Uh, I chose to block the Bomat Couriers um, for a couple of reasons. One, they only have one mana up. So they're just going to sack the, the Courier with three cards under it. Um, discard the two cards that they have in their hand. So they're up a card. And we're going to take two, four, six, eight damage. Puts us down to nine. Um, or... Uh, if they sack the courier, then we can also abrade one of their harsh mentors. And if they if they don't sack it and they just pass, then we can also still abrade their creature. And the harsh mentor is probably the the biggest problem at this point. Uh, but we basically just wanted to keep our creatures alive, and we wanted to force them to make a decision here. Do I sack the Bomac courier? Or do I just let my biggest Bomac Courier, the one with three cards under it, die? And presumably, they, if there's attacking with it, they are willing to sack it and just to braid a Harsh Mentor. So they just pass. They're like, okay, fine, damage. And uh, we're like, eh, let's get this Mentor off the board first. And then they just let their Bomats die to get in the damage, which indicates to us that they really like those two cards in their hand. So we don't know what they are just yet, but they passed, so it's not a land. One of them is probably a Hazaret. Um, they didn't use Shock on Arpia before blocks, and that could have been because they were trying to get the free jam, getting us to block a 2-2 with the free jam. Um, but it's, it's unclear what their plan is at this point. But we took the damage. We drew Magnus Spray. That's good. Uh, we're pretty low on life now, but high enough to where we're unlikely to be dead on their turn. Uh, we still can't really afford to activate the Ballista to do anything because of the Harsh Mentor, unless we kill that first. So let's attack for some damage. We, the goal is to get them dead next turn. So we attack them down to 9. And we play the Virtuoso. And now we're kind of disguising this Magma Spray because uh, we want them to try to go for it. And there's really no reason for us to deal with any of their creatures at this point. Um, rather just give, us, give ourselves time and see what we want to do. But our plan is most likely end step, uh, spray your mentor, make a Thopter off the Virtuoso, kill you in the air. And when they play Hazaret, we know they go land Hazaret, we know that the coast is clear. So here we're just like, all right, fine, whatever. Trump block with the ground creature, not relevant. Uh, untap, kill you in the air. And we could have made a Thopter off the Virtuoso, um, or we just pump the region, and take two off the, the Mentor, and they're just dead. So there's no, no reason to show them the Magma Spray at this point. Uh, it's just, well, you're dead, so kill you. Yeah, so so that game, basically, we, we flooded out the board with a bunch of blockers. We improvised out a free jam region, then we just killed them in the air with flyers. Uh, and before they could mount enough of an offense on the ground to kill us. We didn't actually have to kill any of their creatures. We braided a, a harsh mentor just to save us some damage, but I don't even think we really needed to do that. 
they just didn't have the answer to our, our dragon and we just killed them with the dragon. So that was game two. I don't like Moto. Uh, let's see. I don't like how all the windows keep, uh, you can't just flip over, but whatever. Okay, so game three, we're on the draw. And our hand is acceptable. So I brought in a spell pierce. Uh, I do not advise bringing in spell pierce and, uh, in this matchup, but I wanted to bring in one just to try it because I felt like if they have Chandra's defeat for a dragon, just piercing it is really effective, or they are, they're trying to remove our blocker, things like that. I just felt like one spell pierce could be, could be reasonable. In hindsight, I don't recommend it. So I do not recommend bringing in the spell pierce, but it's in there, so let's see what happens. No turn one play. We have the spray up, unless they play carry Zev, we're probably going to spray whatever they cast. That's a good target for spray because it exiles it. You can't eternalize. So that was, a, that was pretty good. I don't like playing a, a naked ballista on an empty board. I like being able to threaten to sack it, but in this spot, it's okay. Let's play the more cost-effective threat. Don't have to use our energy because we have the, the territory. Uh, kills both our creatures. This is one of the ways I reasons I don't like playing the naked ballista, but it did trade with a shock. Here we don't attack with the Thopter because our plan is to basically make a Thopter. So like if if they have shock, then they could shock our Thopter and get in with the Frostodon. We really want to kill this Frostodon. Because Frostodon is one of the best creatures against us since we're making a bunch of tokens and they're trying to burn us out. So the card does a lot of work against us. Uh, so our plan is to basically block this Frostodon and kill it. And since we have the spell pierce up, I figure we could counter a burn spell if they have it. And so we just like make a Thopter and block and then they, you know, before blocks, they try to burn out our Virtuoso or something or after blocks. And then we just spell pierce it and we get rid of the Frostodon. So that's why we just kept the Thopter back. Um, but they play key to the city <laughs> with two mana up, which is a little awkward. It's their, their last hurrah. And they discard their Soulscar Mage to make it unblockable. So now we're basically in a position where we're definitely taking three a turn from this Frostodon because of the key to the city. And the opponent's at 18. So we really need to come up with something here, um, preferably a an answer to this Frostodon. But as of now, we're going to take three, and then if we try to make a token, we're going to take another damage. We do, because we need to really get this damage in. We draw a land, not very effective. All right, let's play a creature. Let's let's attack, because we're racing. We need to race this Frostodon. Now, okay, they pay two mana, draw a card, yep. Now you play land and discard the other land to make them unblockable. Put us down to five. Do we make a Thopter and go to four? Yeah, uh, I guess not. Yeah, we drew a Ballista. Great. So now we can actually deal with this Ferocidon. So we didn't make that, that Thopter token because they have, uh, we're at four. And basically uh, that Ferocidon is going to just kill us in one hit. Uh, we'd rather just not make the Thopter and give us another, give ourselves another draw step. We drew it on the first chance to hit, hit with Ballista, but now we're still not out of the woods because um, we have to trade this Ballista for the Ferocidon if they use Key to the City to make it unblockable. Um, and since they're able to do that, uh, we basically have to just uh, uh, kill them, they're going to kill us in two turns with Ramanap Ruins, because they're going to sack the Scorching Desert, throw it at us, put us to two, untap, play land, 
throw the other Ramanap ruins at us. So this is kind of a really uh, interesting board state here that we're in. So we attack with everyone, and there does come with risk here. Uh, we are not going to, okay, hold on. We're not going to make the token, because again, the frost on would put us to three, uh, and that's a pretty big risk. And we could just make the flyer with the virtuoso too. Uh, so there's really no reason to uh, to make the, the servo here. But there is a risk in attacking with, uh, with all the creatures, because if the, if the opponent plays a haste creature, then like we don't really have an answer to that. Um, but the opponent's up 14, and we really need to kill the opponent quickly. So we attack for six, which puts them down to eight. And now basically uh, this makes it to where our Ramanap ruins that we have down here um, can be lethal. So we put them down to eight, and it's two, four, six, from our next attack, plus the two from the ruins, that's eight. So this assumes that we have to kill this Ferocidon, which we almost certainly do. Uh, but it also, by attacking with all these creatures, it leaves us with only one creature back, which means they don't have to use the key. The Ferocidon's menace ability already makes it unblockable. So we're basically committed to killing the Ferocidon. Uh, fortunately, the thing that the Ballista is also able to do by staying back, not just immediately killing the Ferocidon, if they do have a haste creature, uh, we can, let's say it's a Kenra, we can block the Kenra and then before damage, sack to target the Frostodon. So that's kind of another reason why, uh, why we just left the one back. So here they pay two to draw cards. Now they have two cards in hand, one of which was a land. And they don't attack because they know that if they attack, they're basically just dead. They don't have that burn spell. Um, <clears throat> and now, given that they don't have that burn spell, we can basically go on that same plan now. And we do have this uh, the spell pierce mana up now, which doesn't really help against four mana. There's really no three or four mana spell that we need to pierce, which again, it's not advisable to bring the bring in spell pierce in this matchup, and here's why, uh, as it's just been rotting in our hand the whole game. Uh, but now basically, we can uh, we can make an attack with everyone. Choose no because that would be pretty disastrous if we just make a token and then they just lightning strike our face and we're just dead. <laughs> so so don't make that mistake. Um, they block our ballista which means, okay, great, uh, take six, go to two. Well, we could just sack the Ramanup runes to kill you, but now that you're blocking the, the Ferocidon, we could just throw all the counters from the Ballista onto the opponent's face. Um, that would mean that if they have a removal spell, they can kill one of our two mana creatures, but then they still take seven, go to one, and our Ramanup ruins kills them. So by blocking... They basically have no good, no way to avoid death in this spot. I don't know. They, they should have just attacked with the frost on last turn, because then we just have to kill it with the ballista. But then, if they don't have another creature, they still just die to the ramen up ruins. So I suspect that they drew a land, and that's why they did this, hoping that we just make a bad attack and then die. But we just throw the ballista damage at them, and then they're just dead. So. Yeah, so this is a really close match. Um, the frost on when you, when we don't have a removal spell for it uh, can be really problematic. Uh, I would advise not bringing in spell pierce and instead just having the extra um, the extra say glory bringer. I think that's maybe what it, what I ended up taking out. If that were a glory bringer, great. We just play glory bringer, exert, kill the frost on, and we're in much better shape. So this game, we made it a little unnecessarily difficult by having Spell Pierce in our deck, but uh, this matchup is pretty close. It's not a slam dunk. Uh, one card that we tried to improve the Mono Red matchup was uh, Commit to Memory, because most of the games that we were losing were to Hazaret, and Commit to Memory is a uh, an answer to Hazaret, or you could also play the, uh, the five mana uh, Coup, 
which is one of the, a strategy that the other energy decks are using. So you just play confisca Confiscation Coup on the Hazret, and then actually just beat them with their own Hazret, since usually at that point we've traded enough resources where we can pretty easily have zero or one card in hand. So uh, if you're really concerned about this matchup, which is it's a legitimate matchup to be concerned about, those are the two cards I would keep in mind as additional cards that could potentially come in. Um, but it's not that bad of a matchup. I, I'd say it's we're a little bit favored. So uh, yeah, this is mono red.